which insurance is right for me? Is it group insurance to my employer? Is it term insurance? Is it whole life? Is it a combination of both? Well, by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly which one or maybe even a combination is best for you. My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. So what we want to do is walk you through our journey of picking the right insurance for us, and hopefully it'll bring some clarity to you. So we're going to jump right into the video and talk about the group insurance or insurance that you can get through your employer. Now, this insurance is amazing because it's cheap. Uh, and it's available and you don't have to do a medical screening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you can check that box and get some insurance through your uh, employer, we definitely recommend that you do it. However, you have to look through a different lens when it comes to buying life insurance. I know that Darius and I, when we were first in introduced to life insurance, we really didn't understand the value of it. And when I say the value, meaning like I pay X amount for so much death benefit and what, what do I need death benefit for and how much do I need it for? Like that was kind of cloudy for me mm -hmm. i would say was it clear for you it was i knew it was something that i needed um at a young age especially once i became employed and on my own i, I knew it was something uh that was a part of adulting yeah, yeah. and <laughs> it, it was like five dollars so i checked the box and i got life insurance so I, I i checked the box exactly we checked the box right but checking the box doesn't mean that you're always uh doing the most. Okay. So hopefully in this video, we can tell you how to do the most when it comes to your life insurance policy. <laughs> All right. So when we talk about the employer benefits, right? Like we said, it's cheap. You should get as much of it as you possibly can, but you have to note that typically through your employer, you're not going to have enough death benefit coverage to uh, replace your income should something happen to you. So when you think about death benefit and you're choosing the right life insurance for you, you have to consider your income. If I make, we always use the example, hundred thousand dollars because it's easy easy math. If I make $100,000 a year, and if something were to happen to me, at minimum, I would want this death benefit to cover my expenses for at least 10 years. 10 to 15. Yeah, yeah. that's why I said at minimum, right? So if you make $100,000 times 10, that's a million dollars. You should have a minimum of a million dollars in death benefit to cover your expenses should something happen to you. Because you have to consider that you have mortgage payments, maybe car, you have education, you have children, whatever the case may be all of that money that you are paying on a monthly or annual basis adds up and you want to make sure that your um, heirs the beneficiaries can maintain their lifestyle should something happen to you right and just to let you know in college i worked for a debt collection as my my job in, in for in college and even if you pass away they're still going to call your family asking for their money Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure the bills is covered, okay? <laughs> so don't just get the $50,000 death benefit through your employer. Get that, but then also know that you need independent insurance, and we'll talk about that just in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, now, anything else you want to add? The benefit of having group insurance is for the fact that you don't have to do the health screening like Carmen said, but the benefit of that is if you have some type of a uh, uh, previous illness or if you has, have some type of uh, other issue where you can't get insurance, you can get insurance through your employer because what it is, it basically is is basically a blanketed insurance policy for the company. That's why you actually can't take it with you also. Yeah, exactly. And when we talk about health screening, for those of you who may not know what we're talking about, is when you get life insurance, uh, the insurance company has to determine if you are insurable. And how are they going to do that? They actually have to have a medical professional come to your house or you go to a facility and they get uh, a, a vial of blood. They get, get a blood sample. They weigh you. Um, they get your blood pressure. You go through a bunch of medical questions. So it's an overall physical, I could say. Um, but with your employer, you don't have to do the physical. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very beneficial. It's, it's very convenient and they make it convenient for a reason because it's, it's a lot of people getting insurance in one place and it's, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for a life insurance policy specifically designed to help you accomplish your financial goals? And if you have a policy or if you're looking for more education, would you like to be a part of a community with like-minded individuals who are all using life insurance to accomplish your financial goals? If so, click on the link below. We would love for you to join the Wealth Nation Money School. The, the benefit about the group uh, insurance through your employer is that they're basically pooling funds together, which is why the, all the uh, employees are able to get the insurance. Um, and for us, uh, we have benefited significantly from group insurance, not only from our, our corporate jobs, um, but also personally. Um, our daughter, whom um, we shared on a previous video, uh, recently passed away, and we were able to get 
insurance through our employer, um, through one of the insurance companies that we work with, uh, and they were able to cover her. It wasn't a large death benefit, but it was enough that it will be uh, significant seed money for her foundation. But the idea is she had a terminal illness, so she wouldn't have been able to get uh, life insurance uh, regardless. Mm -hmm. So when we were able to check that box and just get the minimum we, we possibly could, we absolutely opted for that. And I think when we were applying for it, you know, you're always being hopeful that nothing's going to happen, um, regardless of her diagnosis or not. But, um, you know, the, the day did come where we had to, to, to submit the, the claim. And it was, I have to say, I mean, put, put grief and all that aside. I have to say, like, it was refreshing in a way to see that the process on the other side for us, mm -hmm. you know, because we're always on the sales end where we sell the policy, but we're not never on the collecting side. Um, so it was refreshing to be able to see uh, and, and empathize and, and sympathize, whatever it is, you know, with all of the families who have gone through this process and having to submit the, the, the claim because it was it wasn't easy, um, but it wasn't hard at the at the same time. Can yeah. So I think the the part for us with it was all online and what you have to do is you basically have to submit the death uh, certificate to the, ins the, the insurance company and from there they do their investigation to see um if if whatever happened happened legit. and yeah. that is legit and the process it took i think about three weeks but what really stuck out to me is the fact that what if we didn't have the funds to take care of her funeral arrangements or or what if we didn't have what if we actually needed those funds? So one thing I would like to say to everybody as as a parent who um, had to put in a, a death claim on a child is you still need to make sure you have some money or have some funds available um, because life insurance or the, the group insurance, life insurance, uh, whole life, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, it's a lot. They still have to do their investigation. You still... Uh, I know our, our daughter passed away and we had to have her out of the, the morgue by in 48 hours and the, the hospital was calling us. So we had to have things do a lot of things in a short period of time before the money even came in. Mm -hmm. If you needed those funds, um, you, you really should make sure that you, you do your due diligence and have money saved up um, so that when the funds do come in, you're not, having to do like a GoFundMe or something just to, to get the minimum requirements uh, for a, a funeral funeral arrangement. That's a really good point because uh, since a lot of people don't know the process on the other end of, of actually claiming a death claim, um, you can expect, you know, I would say four to six, even maybe eight, uh, you know, weeks for your your check to come in the mail. And that's being conservative. It could come a lot sooner or it could come a lot later. So that's why it's, it is important with everything that we say. You have to have your funds in place. You have to have savings because you shouldn't be dependent on this check to come in the mail. You should have your ducks in a row, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But it, it when the check comes in the mail, it should be helpful to know that you have some extra support. Right. Should you need it. Right. Now, moving on to oh, what, one other thing I want to say about the group is consider also that it doesn't move with you if you change your employers. Um, so I know we got on a little bit talking about our daughter in this whole process. But the biggest thing that you need to note with the, the, the group insurance through your employer, if you move jobs, you can say bye bye to that policy, which is why it's even more important to have independent insurance, which is what Darius is going to talk about. Right now, for us at this time, we were doing Financial Peace University, and you know, uh, Dave Ramsey has a term insurance that he recommends so we signed up for that specific type of term insurance now it was it was it was following good for us huh <laughs> that was saying following the herd i didn't mean that in a shady way but we were like yes yes do do whatever you say james ramsey that's what we're gonna do right um and and, and, and there's nothing wrong, no, with nothing that. wrong with that um but the term insurance is is good um because it doesn't cost as much money it's it's very affordable um for a, a huge amount of death benefit now the thing with the term is is only for a certain time frame uh, 20 years 25 years whatever you opt into but after that term is up the price of your premium goes up significantly and it when looking at our um illustration we realized that we wouldn't be able to afford that that upswing on the term insurance. Now, that doesn't say that there's anything wrong with it because you never know what's going to happen. And you should have some type of life insurance that you own um, outside of your employer because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I have to say 
talking about term insurance, and again, we're talking about our journey through this whole process, is for me, term insurance, when we first got it, it was great because mm -hmm. we checked the box. We had our own independent insurance, so if we changed jobs, we, we knew that at the end of the day, we had term insurance. However, as we became more educated and start started to learn more about insurance products, I would say for me, I started to not favor term insurance, and, and here's why. The reason being is because I realized that through term, I was going to have to continue to renew this product, and I was also going to have to bank on the fact that I will be healthy 20 years, 30 years from now, whenever my contract run, runs up, and also just knowing that I the instability of not having insurance for my whole life made me not value the product as much. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. So I started to favor whole life, what we'll talk about in a little bit, because I knew that the minute I got that one policy, I will have insurance for the rest of my life, right? Kind of comparing it to your employer. If you have that group, you have to keep, you know, renewing every time that you get another job. If you have term, every time that contract is up, you need another contract. So for me, whole life was like, okay, I can breathe. I'll have life insurance for my entire life, and I don't have to worry about renewing. I don't have to worry about my health should something happen to me. And that's why I started to kind of walk away from term insurance um, and also uh, for our clients you know it for for me it was always having that conversation of do you want to have to renew this what do you think about you know the values in this some clients it makes complete sense for them to have term insurance and some maybe not it just depends on your your situation however knowing what we've been through with our daughter I would say that everybody should have insurance insurance <laughs> life insurance it doesn't matter and I'll be clear, life, life insurance, it should either be term, whole life, or group. But the, those are the only ones that I recommend at the time of making this video. Um, just because those are the ones that are going to provide you uh, insurance should something happen. and You don't have to worry about maintaining the cost of insurance. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying, did, I, did I get my point out there? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is also with term is the fact that you have to do a health screening also. And with that health screening, if you do have some type of... Uh, um, health concern, there's a possibility you may not get the insurance or it may be a little more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the thing is, when you get life insurance or when you get term insurance, they know for the most part, the only thing only thing that'll kill you off is the fact that uh, something out of the ordinary happened. So they, they know because of your health, they know because of your family history, the blood sample they took and the urine sample they took and all your medical history that the chances of something happening to you is um, very slim, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why only about 96, 98 percent of people that have term insurance actually use that term insurance, meaning they actually pass away while that term insurance is is enforced. Now, that brings us to our Wait, don't go to whole life just yet. Okay. <laughs> Is that where you're going to go? Yep. Okay, so uh, before, I, before I interject with term insurance, uh, something that we, exactly what Darius was talking about, and I want to go expound on that a little bit more with term insurance is um, you have to consider um, the cost. And a lot of times when people compare term insurance versus whole life insurance, there's going to be a significant cost difference. One, because term insurance is only for a specific period of time, and it's only going to give you death benefit. So there's no other perks that you can really attach on to this thing. It's just, you know, basic Betty in the sense of you get what you get. And that's why it's so much more affordable. So if you are looking to get whole life insurance and for whatever reason your pockets uh are telling you otherwise, you should absolutely at least have term insurance so that you have some sort of coverage. And then when it makes sense for you financially, um, then you you upgrade to maybe a whole life insurance product. And you can do that through something called a, t a convertible term policy, where you buy a term policy that can be converted into whole life in the future so that you don't feel like you're wasting your money and paying for a term policy uh, that you're that, that where the contract is going to expire at any point, right? Mm -hmm. So you can move uh, that that policy into a whole life policy. So um, that's something that we're, we're really um, proponents of to be able to make sure that you can have your cake and eat it too. Right. Now, the benefits of, not the benefits, the thing that you have to do is you have to make sure that you're with a good insurance company or insurance company that actually has whole life or um, one 
Well, one that actually has whole life insurance because there's some companies that that um, strictly term strictly term the company that we had our term insurance policies with they didn't have whole life so we couldn't have converted it and also when it comes to whole life insurance if you want to we'll get a little bit into it but if you want to use some of the perks or the benefits you have to make sure the company offers that mm-hmm. so you're not just switching over to uh, whole life just to switch Check over to whole box. whole life yeah, yeah. because great I, point. When when it comes to life insurance, there's a lot of things that we don't know about because it's something that uh, I guess we don't like to talk about is our death. Mm. But it's something that needs to be talked about because people die every few seconds. Yeah. And some of those people, about 50 percent of those people don't actually have life insurance. Now, how much um, do you think their family would have benefited had they had something in place outside of their retirement, outside of their savings account? Because you you can have all these things in place, but a lot of wealthy people also have life insurance on top of their wealth. So why not add more money to the next generation? Absolutely. And the thing about the term conversion, like Darius was pointing out, is if you are going to uh, get a convertible term policy, you have to make sure that you convert it with that company. Like, for example, using cars, you can't uh, trade a, a Honda in for a Toyota, you know, in this ex- in this example, right? Mm-hmm. It has to be with the same company. So that's why you need to make sure that you do your research ahead of time. If, you, if term is right for you right now, determine what whole life products are available to you, what um, riders, what add-ons can you add inside that policy to make sure that when it makes sense for you to convert it, you have that product available. That was a really great point. Yeah. Thank you. Now we have whole life insurance. And if we had term insurance with the companies that we have whole life insurance with, we would have converted it over to whole life. But we had we switched companies because we thought the companies that we were, we were working with um, is better. I currently have a life insurance policy with America United Life. Carmen has a life insurance policy with Security Mutual Life and Ohio National Life. And our daughter has a insurance policy with Security Mutual Life. And our daughter that passed away was with uh, Mass Mutual. No, Matt, Matt Life. That's part of mass mutual. Oh, yeah, yeah. Specifically, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, jumping into whole life insurance, whole life insurance, like Carmen said earlier, is more expensive than term insurance because term insurance is just a death benefit for a certain time frame. And Hope- that doesn't make it, sorry to interrupt, that doesn't make it less or more valuable because it's more expensive. It's just a more expensive product. And that's going back to that whole um, conflict between don't get whole life insurance because it's so expensive. Well, it's a completely different product than a term policy. Yeah, think about it as as far as like turning the the knob up on death benefit for a a short period of time. Um, And because it's only for a certain certain period of time, it it allows you to buy more death benefit. Now- Term. That's term insurance. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to whole life insurance, you you turn up the, the premium a little bit. It gives you less uh, death benefit, but it gives you death benefit for your entire life. So regardless of what happens or uh, what you get into or what type of sickness or illness that you get in your lifetime, that death benefit is going to be available for you as long as your policy is in force. Yeah. Like you said, going back to the stove, I was like, where is it going with that? So term insurance is like boiling on hot uh, high heat and mm-hmm. then ter- whole life insurance is a slow simmer yeah <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> now one of the perks that's available to you with whole life insurance that we uh, very much love is called cash value and this is the the main thing that our whole channel is premised off and if if you're new to this channel we talk about how to utilize the cash value inside your policy to finance your lifestyle now what is cash value every time you pay your premium there is cash that becomes available inside your policy and uh, basically how this works is you can utilize the cash at your discretion. You don't have to ask for the money. You don't have to fill out applications uh, qualifying for the money. It's just available to you because you're a policy holder. So you can access the the funds in two ways. You can withdraw the funds, meaning like you go to the ATM machine and you take the money out. Um, If you do that, you are subjected to taxes and you affect the growth of the policy moving forward. So we don't always recommend that. Um, We always recommend that you get a loan, which, which is a second option, meaning you get a loan from the insurance company. They give you their money. Um, so that you don't affect the growth inside your policy and the the cash that you have available stays 
put. And this is where we love this because the, the cash value that grows inside your policy grows at a compounded rate. And if you're not affecting the growth of it, that just um, makes makes your cash value grow undisturbed. And we can continue to use OPM or other people's money, meaning the insurance company's funds, to finance our lifestyle. So we've used the cash value inside of our policy to pay off debt. We've used it to fund vacations. Uh, we've used it to pay for um, our day-to-day expenses. You know, you name it. We, we've used it for everything. Yeah. Now, we... We, we were fortunate enough to come up on this concept because we just happened to be hanging out with some rich people at the time. And we found out that they played this this game of life a little different. So we figured that we should listen and see what they're doing with their money because they use the same tools that we have access to a little differently. And one of the tools that we found out was how they use life insurance. And, and basically the idea behind using cash value is leveraging your cash um, to get a loan. From an insurance company versus when you get credit, you're using your future earning potential, like money that you haven't even made yet um, to get a loan from the bank. The bank yeah. That's the, the, the difference. You actually have the money on hand. You're just leveraging your actual cash, keeping your cash and still getting an OPM. Mm-hmm. Now, when you start paying that money back, like, for example, when you leverage your future earning potential, you pay it back with interest. So if it's good enough for me to pay the bank interest is good enough for me to pay myself that interest keep the difference and keep rolling those funds to not only pay off debt but to also invest my money so that we can have our money making money for us now that's just a quick overview of of how we got into it and and the idea behind it Mm -hmm. but back to whole life if you want to see that motion of money then you can click on this video here yeah break it down yeah. Now back to whole life, whole life insurance. A lot of times people will buy whole life insurance and they still be underinsured. That's one of the things that we started to learn as we um, really focus in on whole life is even though people have a whole life insurance is still a whole life insurance policy still may not be enough. So what we started to see people do um, in our industry or, or wealthy people um, or business owners on the way to uh, where they're trying to go is. They also have term insurance. Even well, even the wealthy people have term insurance. They have whole life insurance so that they can leverage the funds. But they get to a certain point to where they just don't necessarily need the cash. They want more death benefit. Mm -hmm. Having that conversation with a multimillionaire was mind boggling to me. But this is this is what happens. They also have term insurance along with their whole life insurance because one is is inexpensive. And it gives them the ability to pass on more wealth to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about the conversation of being underinsured. So what Darius is talking about is if, you know, you need a million dollars in death benefit, right? You make $100,000 times 10 years, you need a minimum of a million dollars in death benefit. But if you have $500,000 only, that means you are underinsured. Right. So just thinking about that equation. So that's why you may have to do a mix of the both, Mm -hmm. um, a little combo deal (laughs) so that you can make sure you have the whole life insurance policy so that you can use that to finance your lifestyle and have maybe some convertible term in place so that when it makes sense for you to uh, swap that into a whole life of policy, you have that death benefit in place. Mm -hmm. And this has been something that we personally have been reevaluating because it is easy to just look at your death benefit and uh, look at it as a stagnant number. Um, I don't know if this is something that we've ever really communicated before, but yeah. a lot of times people get uh, life insurance are like, yep, I'm good. <laughs> you know, and it's like 10 years, 15 years rolls by and it's like your income has changed. You're in maybe a bigger house. You have different cars. You know, your your cost of living has significantly increased and now you are underinsured again. Mm-hmm. So you that's something that you always have to look at, maybe even on an annual basis and, and come to the table with, uh, you know, the parties that be and reevaluate. Do we have enough death benefit because our life maybe has changed now? And that's something that we're looking at is uh, definitely adding that the combo deal to our philosophy uh, personally because we recognize that as we continue to grow as our values continue to grow in our businesses you know we need more death benefit on hand should something happen to either one of us right because when you buy your life insurance policy is based off your income at that point 
And if you're a business owner, you know that things change and you have opportunities in your life where things go up significantly. But your whole life insurance is still based on where you were versus where you are now. Now, the nice thing about whole life insurance is it does go up every time you pay your premium. Your death benefit goes up. Your cash value goes up every time you pay your premium. Whole life specifically. Whole life. Whole whole life. life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes depending on the different investments you make, it may not go up fast enough. So that's why you may want to get some term insurance to to throw in there. That's why you may want to get another whole life insurance to 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 throw in there so that you can have more money. It really depends on your existing situation. That's why it's very important for you to be aware of your current financial situation so that when you talk to a financial advisor or um, one of our insurance agents is you're able to articulate exactly what you're where you are currently right now and where you want to go so that you can make sure that you get the right thing, the right product for you. Yeah. Because Based on what we know, not everybody should get a whole life insurance policy. Not everybody uh, needs a whole life insurance policy right now or, or can afford it. But the good thing about it is as your income changes, you can change your you can convert your your term insurance policy over to whole life. But it, it has to be the right time for you and the right fit. Absolutely. And these are just the things that we continue to, to discuss in our own household. These are things that we talk to our clients about because it's important that you're always in tune. Mm-hmm. And the good uh, rule of thumb would be is every time you get a pay raise, you need more life insurance. Like, think about it that way because you need to, again, make sure that you can cover it. I can't stress that enough. Um, because of everything that we've just recently gone through with our daughter, like again, we didn't need uh, her death benefit to sustain our lifestyle, but it put me in the the shoes of the families who had the relatives that were underinsured and are dependent on that check. You know what I'm saying? So for us, it was just, wow, mind boggling to see like, we're not doing enough in, in communicating to our audience. We, I'm saying me, you're, you're perfect. But <laughs> I, I'm not doing enough in communicating to our audience that you need to make sure that you are over, and I can, you can't be overinsured, but you have over the, the minimum that you need to, to make sure that your your family can sustain their lifestyle. I can't stress that enough. Yeah, and also um, insurance on your children um, is, yeah. is very important for you to have your, shir- your children insured because uh, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what uh, the tomorrow is going to bring, but you want to make sure that you have insurance for it. Absolutely. And the, the hack with insuring your children is the fact that it's very cheap to insure children. Mm-hmm. So you can start out you know, at a really cheap cost. And as they age, as they get older, they have significant benefits already to be able to pass on to their children. And you've already planted that apple seed, right? Mm-hmm. So, so look at insurance for your children is like planting the apple seed is nothing that you really need. But once that tree beca- uh, is mature, you can imagine what the, the fruits... Um, uh, what will bear for the next generation. Right. That's how we look at things. Now, uh, one thing I want to talk about is we haven't mentioned like index policies, universal policies, variable policies. And the reason being is because this is Carmen talking, not the life insurance agent. <laughs> From my personal perspective, this these aren't life insurance products. These are products that allow you to invest using life insurance as the basis. And for me, again, Carmen, the the personal, uh, from, from my personal perspective, if we're talking to you about life insurance, we want to talk to you about the products that are purely life insurance and that nothing that costs, you know, investing, anything is going to affect the death benefit. Um, that's something that you can talk to another agent about. We actually don't sell those policies um, because um, those just aren't pr- products that we provide to our clients so um again we're we're talking from a personal standpoint and making sure that you understand exactly what you're getting into uh term insurance whole life insurance uh the the group insurance that you have through your life uh, through your employer are pure life insurance products and when i say pure life insurance products you pay a premium you get a death benefit you don't have to do anything else right now when it comes to other products the the reason why they're available is because it offers flexibility and with that flexibility comes a, a cost it's up to you what whether or not you want to uh, and responsibility and, and responsibility. Gotta, That's key. You got to watch that puppy. Yeah. So the it's, it's nothing wrong with those products. Those are also products that um, the insurance companies offer. And at the end of the day, insurance company is trying to turn a profit and all the products they, they do offer comes at a cost um, uh, as the consumer. And you just really have to make sure that it's the right thing for you. And it's the, you just, again, make sure you know your financial situation so that you can talk to uh, one of our financial advisors or one of our insurance agents so that they can make sure they steer you in the right direction. 
Absolutely. So uh, we hope that this information was helpful for you today in navigating the, the life insurance realm. Uh, but again, making sure that if you are uh, a corporate employee, that you do at least check that box and get the benefits that your employer have. Um, get you some independent insurance, whether it's term, uh, convertible term or whole life. Make sure that you have that on deck at all times and make sure that you own your own lifestyle. Or someone else will.